Welcome to my classroom. In this video, I'd like to share with you my process for setting up a painting lesson. Please accept this as an example for you to model your own painting process from mine. I have a, an imaginary classroom here of 12 children and your classroom, of course, will be very different. You might not have a sink. You have items in different places that might stand in the way of your creating a perfect order, such as I have in my imagination. But I encourage you to think through the process, taking into consideration all that I have brought to you today. One of the most important things I find that painting can bring to your classroom is a sense of calm and order. The thinking through of the steps and making choices about who will be responsible for what task is a very important part of this process. The work that you do to set habits with your children for a painting lesson is going to be time well spent. In my classroom here, you can see that I have a pile of painting boards. I have my trays with watercolor. I have here jars and containers of water, one for each. I also have my jars that hold large quantities of diluted watercolor paints. You can see my other video on how this is done. I have a sink here, but you might not have a sink. If you, if you don't have a sink, then you will have a basin filled with water there for soaking your paper. I have a basket here of sponges that have been uh, dampened and softened and wrung out ready. And I have my clean brushes ready to share with my students. Here I have a pile of paper, watercolor paper that's been counted and is ready and waiting to go into the water. And I have a pile of clean rags for the students to use. In the front, I have a small table to hold my supplies and an easel. Different teachers choose different ways of doing their demonstration for the class, and I have found that the best way is for you to demonstrate on an easel. You will need to have two binder clips in order to hold your paper to your painting board, because as it dries, it will begin to peel away from the board, and you want to make sure that your picture doesn't fall on the floor. When you consider your painting lesson time period, you want to give yourself enough time to set up, paint the lesson, and clean up. Often the amount of time that we're given is not enough time to do all of those things. So when I schedule my painting lesson in my week at the beginning of the year, I often have it occurring after snack or after lunch so that I can call my painting helpers in from recess five or six minutes early so that they can assist in the process of getting the room ready for the class. In the first part of the setup process, the painting helpers can come in and fulfill these tasks. They can wash the painting boards. They can fill water containers. I usually use a mason jar or perhaps a yogurt, a large yogurt container. The water gets filled about three quarters of the way full. One helper can count out the number of papers and their job would be to submerge each of the papers into the basin of water or the sink filled with water. And you can see my other video 
in regards to how that process is done. So I'm going to place the paper in the basin. Your helper can do that for you. The last person can be responsible for dampening and wringing out the sponges. They were sitting in the cupboard for the week from the last painting lesson, so those need to be refreshed, um, filled with water and wrung out so that they can do their job. Prior to the work that the painting helpers are doing, so if the children are out at recess, you can take the time to fill and main, maintain these jars of paint. Whether it is filling these jars with the colors from the mother jars, the large mason jars of color diluted that you have made previously, or just double checking and making sure that each of the jars has the right amount of paint in them. With the lower grades, I often don't give them a full set of colors every painting lesson. Sometimes they might only have one or two or three colors, and the rest will remain in the cupboard. Once the children have completed that work, the other children will be coming perhaps in from recess or um, from their transition. So if they had a bathroom break or some time to just have a little conversation with their friends, when they come in and are ready for painting, the children are asked to sit in their chairs and be ready. When the children are sitting down and getting ready, it would be the time after the five minutes to remove the paper from the sink and place it on the extra painting board and cover it over with the large damp towel and have them set aside. You don't want to keep your paper sitting in the water in the sink for too long. One of the questions I have received often is when do I make the time to review the work from the children from the previous painting lesson? Talking about painting is, is something that you have to cultivate with your class over the course of time. It's not something that they're going to be very good at immediately. And in the early years, you are going to be modeling language and approach to speak about the children's work. Sometimes the conversation occurs once the painting helpers have done all of the setup and everything is ready for the painting lesson. The children have transitioned from wherever they were to the painting class and they're sitting in their chairs. Painting helpers are sitting, everybody's sitting. And then I have brought out the paintings from the week before and we have a quote picture show. And then I have them recall the story that I told and we review the pictures. With each child's picture, I will bring a comment or an observation about their results or their technique and the children can make additional comments and here the time is really important that you are clear about what kind of comments the children can make. During this time it is important that the children receive both positive feedback and admiration for their work as well as constructive feedback which would include ways for them to improve their process, improve their picture making, and improve their technique with the tools that they are learning how to use. This kind of conversation is really important for painting. Once the picture show is over, then I would then give an introduction to the painting project that we would be doing that day. And sometimes I have found that m my schedule does not allow me to have the picture show during the actual painting lesson. In those years when, say, my, my painting lesson is quite 
shortened because of uh, it's squeezed in between two other classes, what I will do is move the picture show process into the main lesson period. And I would have the picture show either on the day after we did the painting lesson or the following day, depending on when the paintings are dry enough for me to handle. Once the children are seated, you can talk to them again about the setup process. If the chairs and the desks are separated, you can have the children connect the desks into pairs throughout the classroom. If they're set in groups of three, perhaps the two in the middle would come together to create a pair in the middle. For setting up for painting lesson, every child will have a painting board, a container of clean water, and a dry rag. Each pair of children will have a sponge, a set of paints, that these two things will be shared between the two in the pair. I ask the children to decide among the two which will get these items and which will get these items. This child has a lot more work to do, more things to carry than this one, but the following painting lesson, they will switch jobs so that the tasks are evenly suited. The reason why I have one child do this one altogether is that they can go and get two painting boards they can go and get two containers of clean water. They can go and get two dry rags so that it can happen carefully and making sure that both of the children in the pair get the things that they need. It also will create less trips to get the objects. If both of the children have to go and get a board and get a clean water, and get a dry rag, that means that there are six trips rather than just three. And there's an important reason for why I am concerned about these kinds of things is because the more trips they're going away from their desk to get more things causes confusion and causes chaos in the class and creates noise because as children do, they're talking along the way. So starting in the first time I taught first grade, so my first number of years because I taught middle school, um, I didn't take this into consideration, but on the first or second day of painting in my first grade year, I had one student who was carrying a board and another student who was not paying attention crashed into the corner of the board of the other students and drew blood. It was a very upsetting moment. Lots of tears and upset children. And so from then on, I created the painting flow so that the children would always be traveling through the classroom in the same direction. And in this way, when they're carrying all of their objects, it is our hope that there are no collisions, that the children take their time and they have a few opportunities to move their legs because they'll be standing or sitting for some time, and also so that there is some calm organization about the way the room moves during the painting lesson. So a child, so say, this child wants to go over here and get a jar of water. They can't just go this way. They have to come through the desks and around the back to pick it up. Because if they went this way, a child coming this way with painting boards might crash into him. So this way, the children, as they come and pick up their painting boards, they can travel safely through the classroom without worrying that they're going to crash into someone. Sometimes they might take a shortcut and go down the middle aisle.
and that's okay, just as long as they're going around the room in the same direction. Here you can see my classroom all ready for painting. Each child has a painting board, paints, their own clean water jar, their own rag, and a sponge which they will share. These paints I always put in the middle and then there would be always some discussion about whose desk the paints would go on so that they aren't placed on the crack. Especially if you have two children who have different heights of desks, it will be important that they make that decision as to where the paints would carefully sit. It's at this point that you would then take the paper from the, the top of the pile of waiting damp papers and you would attach it to your board and you would create your demonstration. The children are all sitting in their desks ready and waiting, but they, one, don't have a brush to play with or fiddle faddle with, and they don't have a wet paper that's drying along the way. The paper is here, damp and ready, waiting for them when they're ready. Once you have completed your demonstration, you would quietly have your painting helpers, two painting helpers come. One would hold the painting board with the wet paper. And as you walked around the room passing out the paper, your painting helper would hold the board and you would be able to carefully lift each paper from the board and give it to the students so that everyone would carefully and quietly receive their papers. While you're passing out the papers, each of the students will take their sponge and wipe down the paper to remove any excess dampness. You complete your work as you are going your second painting helper will have then the tray of paintbrushes and they will follow right behind you. Soaked too many pieces of paper, that's okay. So they will follow right behind, passing out a brush for every child. Once they receive their brush, they're sitting quietly, waiting for everyone's task to be completed. Once everyone's paper is sponged, Everyone has a brush. The child would find their way to their seat and all would sit or stand depending on how you would like to proceed and they would say their verse. The sunlight shines into each day and sends the dark of night away. It brings the colors to my eyes, the bright green earth, the deep blue skies, the yellow sun, the red, red rose that in the gentle garden grows. And from within my loving heart, the light always conquers dark. So on my paper, let it be sunlight and water joyfully. Class, you may begin. Now, as the students are beginning to complete the work, this transition is very important because the children who have finished need to preserve the quiet space for the children who are continuing to work. What I have done in the early grades is I have made sure that the children have some beeswax in their desk 
so that when they're done with their painting, they might sit and warm their beeswax, or they might have a book in their desk where they can take their book out and sit with it in their lap. They could also quietly go to the restroom, but this time is really meant to be quiet and the children should not get up to clean up their space yet. Because as soon as they start to move, the other children feel that they have to finish quickly. And without your intervention, that noise will cause tension with the children who are still working. So I encourage you to set the tone that at, if the child is finished painting, it doesn't mean that they have to clean up immediately. They should let their board rest on the table, let the paints on the painting begin to dry a little bit, and they should find a quiet activity for them to do while they're waiting for the other children in the classroom to finish. They can have a handwork bag, or they could just sit quietly and look at their work. Keep an eye on the time, and when there's about five more minutes left before it's time to clean up, you need to announce that to the children who are still working so that they have an opportunity to finish up. They have a verbal guidance to wake them out of the color spell and awaken them again to their bodies and their feet and their, and their consciousness of being in the class again so that they can get ready to complete their work. And as those five minutes are coming closer to the end, you can silently ask some of the children who were some of the first to finish to begin to bring their work and their boards to the drawing rack that you have set up. So in my classroom, the drawing rack was over here and what I would do is, again, preserving this flow through the classroom, have the children carefully first bring their boards around to be stacked in the drying rack. I want to bring your attention next to the work of the painting helpers because at this point the children who are the painting helpers have to be really awake again and step into their tasks. They have done the setup, they helped to pass out the paper and helped to pass out the brushes and now they are in charge of helping the classroom come back to order again so that we can move on to the next task of the day. Here, there, one of them is going to set up the drying rack. I always buy a little rack such as this one from a household store where the children individually, as they're cleaning up their desks, they will come and hang their dry, their wet rag on the drying rack. They will be in charge of washing the jars and tightening the lids. They will wipe down the desks, wash the brushes, and organize and store all the remaining supplies. We go back to the children who have helped to set up the desks and the children who brought the painting boards and the containers of clean water and the rags will do their job again, but in reverse order. And the children who brought the sponges and the paints will also do their job in reverse order. And you will have to um, decide what you are going to do with the paints after the painting lesson. If the paints are going to remain in the little jars, then the 
child returning the jars to the counter will only just have to set them on the side on the counter. If you've decided that the paints have to be emptied and returned to the mother jars, then it's this child's responsibility to put those paints back in the jars. So you, what you might do is as the children are getting ready, you might then set up these jars ready and waiting for the children so that when they come to the station, they can put their painting, they can put their, their painting rack down on the counter and can carefully pour the paints into the jars. You might set it up in such a way so that the jars are in the middle. And with the jars in the middle, then you can actually have two children come to the counter with their jar sets and pour the jar, pour the colors back into the mother jar. They would then stack their little painting racks and all the dirty jars go in the sink. And there will be stationed a painting helper who will be washing those jars. Okay, so that work can be done. The other child, well that child who um, is doing this work, that job is more complicated at the end of painting, whereas at the beginning of painting it was not complicated. They also will take the sponge and bring that as well and place it in the basket. The child who is responsible for the painting boards will now be responsible for bringing the brushes back to the sink. So they'll bring the two containers of clean water, they'll hang the two rags on the drying rack, bring the container of water pour it out in the sink, pour it out in the sink and stack them or, or put them neatly here. And then they would gather the paint brushes and bring them to the painting brush tray where one of the painting helpers would be responsible for washing those brushes or as I have done, I usually am the one to wash the brushes. But I have included it here in the, in the list for painting helpers. Wiping down the desks. Usually I have a separate sponge that is used for wiping down the desks. Organize and store the supplies. So once all of the supplies and containers are all brought over here, then the painting helpers will be responsible for making sure that everything goes inside of the cupboards. Here now is my clean classroom. Painting is over. All things are set aside to dry. All my jars and brushes are put away. Desks are cleaned, and the children are ready to transition into their next activity. I hope you can take these suggestions so that you can build your own form, your own rhythms in the classroom, and that your students look forward to painting every week for years to come. Happy painting!